for fossil fuel resources be able to discuss the use of coal and its consequences, um, the use of petroleum and its consequences, the use of natural gas and its consequences, and discuss the use of oil sands and liquefied coal and their consequences, um, and then describe the future prospects for fossil fuel use. What does the future hold for our fossil fuel resources? Liquid petroleum that is removed from the ground is known as crude oil. And so the U.S. Department of Energy refers to oil or crude oil and petroleum as equivalent substances. Um, and we'll do the same for to make it easy. Um, <clears throat> but crude oil can be further refined into a variety of compounds like um, tar, asphalt, gasoline, diesel, kerosene. These are all distinguished by the temperature at which they boil. Um, and they can be separated and make different types of petroleums. This process takes place in an oil refinery or like a large factory. Um, <clears throat> and the refining process is really complex and actually dangerous and requires this really huge financial commitment. So larger oil spills have occurred elsewhere in the world um, than our uh, BP and Exxon Valdez and um, Deepwater Horizon. Uh, for example, in 1991, in the Persian Gulf War, uh, 912 billion liters, so that's 240 million gallons of petroleum, were spilt um, when wellheads were deliberately sabotaged or destroyed during this Iraq um, by the Iraqi army um, in Kuwait. And oil is spilled into natural environment in a variety of ways. In 2003, the National Academy of Sciences study uh, found that oil extraction and transportation were responsible for relatively a small fraction of the oil spill into the marine waters worldwide. It found that roughly 85% of the oil entering the marine waters came from runoff from the land components. Um, and it came from like rivers and airplanes and small boats and personal water crafts, um, <clears throat> including both like deliberate and even an, an accidental um, release of this oil. So in the United States, debates continue over the trades between uh, domestic oil extraction and the consequences for habitat and species living near oil and well pipelines. Um, <clears throat> when a 1,300 kilometer, 800 mile pipeline was constructed to transport oil over land from the northern slope of Alaska uh, to tankers that would carry it south to <clears throat> the United States. Wildlife biologists predicted that the pipeline might actually melt permafrost, and this would interfere with the, um, the, the calving of um, caribou, or like the birthing and the, nature, the nurturing of caribou calves. So scientists uh, continue to monitor this pipeline, um, but so far, you know, we've come to the conclusion um, it does have some environmental impact. The transportation of petroleum products by means of other than pipeline can have a significant consequence. Um, <clears throat> there have been a number of serious railway accidents in recent years, resulting in domestic drilling for oil in the United States. Um, there was an accident in Quebec, uh, Canada, near that main border. A railway train uh, carrying oil derailed and exploded in this small town um, in the early morning hours, and it killed 47 people, and it destroyed um, dozens of buildings. So the debate about the environmental effects of land-based oil extraction has continued with the proposal of allowing oil extraction in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, or ANWR. So a 7.7 .7 billion hectare, 19 million acre tract of land in northern Alaska um, is thought to yield 95 billion liters or 25 billion gallons, 1.4 trillion liters of oil in the substantial quantities um, of also of natural gas. So not only are we talking oil here, but we're talking a huge amount of natural gas exists on this National Wildlife Refuge. And so um, people are, uh, they're against, obviously, this um, exploration of this area and petroleum extraction because it's going to harm this pristine habitat and for many species. And not to mention there's people living in the area. So humans, as well as wildlife, have been harmed by oil extraction. Um, in Nigeria and many other developing countries, oil fields are adjacent to villages. 
thick gelatinous crude oil covers the ground where people walk and even, you know, in those areas, they're even barefoot, right? So oil flaring and burning off this excess natural gas uh, takes place close to homes. And so there's concerns about the extraction and the burning on people's health. And so that's a human right issue. And so the environmental justice um, has led to um, violent political protests in, in many areas, not to mention just Nigeria. We have already mentioned natural gas as a connection um, with petroleum, but since it exists as a component of petroleum in the ground, as well as a gaseous deposit found separately from petroleum, we're going to talk about it differently here. Uh, natural gas is 80 to 95% methane, that's CH4, and 5 to 20% ethane, propane, or butane. Because natural gas is lighter than oil, it lies above the petroleum deposit. And natural gas is generally extracted in association with petroleum. Only recently have, um, <clears throat> have, have, has explorators, whatever they're called, <laughs> um, specifically gone in to um, extract na natural gas. So the two largest uses of natural gas in the U.S. anyway are for electricity and for industrial purposes. But this fuel availability, particularly in the United States, um, you know, people think about natural gas, they think about portable barbecues and heaters. But overall, natural gas supplies 27% of the energy that we use in the United States. Because of the extensive natural gas pipeline system in many parts of the U.S., roughly one half of the homes use natural gas for heating. And that's substantially different compared to coal and oil. Natural gas contains fewer impurities, and so therefore it emits almost no sulfur dioxide or particulates during combustion. And for every joule of energy released during combustion, natural gas emits 60% as much um, CO2 as coal. So natural gas is, is by far the cleanest of the fossil fuels. And <clears throat> as long as it can be supplied in the pipeline, that becomes very convenient, right? Um, and in some locations where natural gas pipeline is not present, the, um, they also, um, natural gas can be, you know, very inconvenient as well. But there are some disadvantages of natural gas. So while its combustion releases less carbon dioxide than fossil fuels, unburned natural gas, methane, escapes into the atmosphere and itself is this potent greenhouse gas. It's 25 times more efficient at absorbing infrared energy than carbon dioxide. So natural gas that leaks after extraction is suspected to contribute um, in this steep rise in atmospheric methane, methane concentrations that we've seen since 1990. And while the natural gas is referred to as clean fossil fuel energy extraction, it's still uh, the leading cause of environmental problems. So the process of exploring for natural gas involves a what we call a thumper truck. Um, <clears throat> and as the um, hydraulic fracking process, um, where they um, you know frack all the way down into the rock layer, this releases natural gas from a, what we call a host rock. And so fracking uses large amounts of chemicals because those chemicals um, do not need to be named um, because their effects are unknown and weird. Um, those chemicals can basically contaminate our groundwater um, from the drilling process, from gas wells. And so hydraulic fracking has grown more widespread. And a number of scientists and gas extraction experts have attempted to uh, quantify exactly how much more natural gas escapes during extraction and transportation. And they estimate about mm, somewhere between 2 to 9% of um, of the gas escapes from the total amount that's extracted.